Hi, calculus friends. We're going to take a look at our final video for not only topic 7.8, but actually the entire unit 7 as it pertains to AB material. Topic 7.9, if you recall, is a BC topic that those videos can be found a little bit elsewhere. So what are we going to do here in this particular video? Well, we're going to look at another growth model, a little bit like the one that you may have seen in uh, video five, if you watched example five over Newton's law of cooling, but this one applies to population growth. And our subject today, fish, something is fishy. Let's take a look at our new model. It says that fish are being introduced into a man-made lake. The change in the rate of fish F with respect to time T is directly proportional to 900 minus F. And that is where the problem differs from our normal differentiation growth decay model. T is going to be measured in years. It says time zero, there are 400 fish. And three years later, there are 600 fish. Part A is where we're going to do the bulk of our heavy lifting, and it asks us to write and solve the differential equation that describes this situation. So as I said before, we cannot rely on our basic model that I affectionately call KECT. dy over dt equaling k times y is not what's happening in this problem. In this particular problem, our derivative is proportional to something more than just the dependent variable f. It's 900 minus that f. So what that means is we just have to start from scratch. We just have to write our differential equation. So df over dt is equal to k times the quantity 900 minus f. So it's going to look a little bit something like that. Next up, we're going to divide 900 minus F over to the left. We're going to keep our DF over on the left, and we're going to multiply our DT over to the right. So really, it's the same process in solving. It's just that we kind of have some unusual variables, F and our T. Now we're going to go ahead and integrate. And the left side has a very tricky integral. Hopefully you all recognize that yes, there is a natural log of 900 minus F. Nobody hopefully will argue that it's a typical one over U form, but because there's a negative sign in front of our dependent variable, if we were to let U equal 900 minus F, the derivative of that U is negative one. So we're going to have to offset with a negative, and it's so, so easy to miss. It would only cost you likely one point in the grand scheme of things, but we want to try to be as accurate as we possibly can. We owe it to the fish, right? So don't forget, if you have a negative in front of this variable, which I'm going to tell you is going to happen so often with this model, because it's always a constant minus the number of items, the, the number of fish, the number of whatever. And we'll talk a little bit about what the role of this constant is. So don't forget that. On the right side, when we integrate, switching to my pen, when we integrate, we're going to end up with k times t. And then we can add our constant c afterwards. So there is our basic model with the unknown k and c. Now we got to get to work and start finding k and c. So we'll first of all find c by using our initial condition here. t equals 0, fish is equal to 400. Now unlike before where you could so easily replace the c with the 400, can't go there with this problem. You cannot do that because you're going to find out c is not going to be 400. That's going to be true with your basic Kecht model, but not here. So you're going to replace the F with six uh, with 400. So 900 minus 400 would be 500. Don't really need the absolute values anymore. And when I let T be zero, the K is wiped out and boop, before you know it, you've got yourself your C. So basically now we have a more, uh, I don't know, getting there precise model, it still is a little bit lacking because we don't know the value of our k. But we'll find that next. So there's where we're at right now. 
So to find our value of K, we use another piece of information that says three years later, there are 600 fish in the lake. And so that information using, well, I won't even write that down. You know that I'm going to plug T, uh, 3 in for T and 600 in for F. And so if I do that, we have negative natural log of, don't really need the absolute values either, will I? Because I've got 900 minus 600, which is 300. And that's equal to KT, or K times 3, I should say, minus our natural log of 500. So we're going to start solving by adding the natural log of 500 over to the left. And then we have to very carefully simplify the natural log of 500 minus the natural log of 300. And it is not the natural log of 200. It's the natural log of 5 thirds. Remember that you consolidate two logarithms that are being subtracted by dividing them into a single logarithm. And then if we move our 1 third over to the left by dividing it, k is going to be 1 third times the natural log of 5 thirds. So finally, we've got a model that is a much more precise model. We could actually start to use this. We could use our k that we found, 1 third natural log of 5 thirds. When I multiply this by t, right, I'm just going to place that t right there. And there we go. Now, the only thing about this model is that, let's say I want to find the number of fish at a given time. I don't have my fish by itself, right? I don't have my F totally isolated. So I want to kind of focus on that right now. I want to solve this equation for F because that's sort of innately built in to solve the differential equation. When you see these words, it innately means to get that dependent variable alone. Now this one's a bit tricky, so make sure you pay close attention. You are going to exponentiate both sides. You are going to use a base E on both sides, but not before you get rid of this pesky negative sign. So multiply everything through this equation by a negative first. So that's going to produce this result. And at this point, we can, oops, that's going to be a plus there as well. And now at this point, you can exponentiate. We just needed this negative to be free and clear so that the E and the LN would disappear now. I did not want to put that negative here as the exponent, although I could have, but it would create a fraction mess here, and I thought it was best to put that negative on the other side. Both approaches will get you the correct answer, though. So over here, I have absolute value of 900 minus F after the E and the LN go away. And then over here, uh, a couple of things are going to happen. First of all, I'm going to take this negative 2 thirds, uh, how about I say negative T over third, 3, and I'm going to make that become the power of this 5 thirds. And then I'm going to split this plus into a multiplication using two bases of E. At this stage, I can then, on the right side, move 500 to the front, because after all, that's what this is going to be. And then E and the LN will disintegrate, and I have a base of 5 thirds raised to the negative T over 3 power. As far as the 900 minus F is concerned, I can get rid of the absolute values, and I want to talk about why we can do that. This 900 is acting sort of as a threshold, a number by which we would not ever exceed by stocking this lake over a long period of time. In other words, this lake is probably just made so that it can sustain 900 fish. After that, they're going to be fighting too much for resources, space, etc., etc. And so for that reason, our fish will never be greater than 900, so this is never going to be a negative value. And so we can get rid of the absolute values at that point. And then from here, I know we're kind of running a little low on space, but let's say if I add the F over to the right, I have my fish at time t, and then I could subtract this 500 quantity over to the left side. And this would be 
really one of a couple of three or four different ways that this could be written and it's perfectly perfectly fine the other possible thing that you could have done is you could flip-flop the three and the five and make that exponent positive it would certainly work it's certainly the same thing mathematically now we can take this equation and do a lot of cool things with it like in part b we can find things like uh, what is the population in another three years so to do that i simply say okay well what would be the time at that particular moment well it says another three years so you've got to be very careful because you don't want to throw three in here because that doesn't really communicate the another three years notice how we've already waited three years up here to do a new measurement another three years implies that it's six years from the moment that we originally stocked the lake i know could be a little tricky but that's what we're going to do so 900 minus 500 times 5 thirds to the negative t over 3, which in this case would be negative uh, 6 over 3 or negative 2. And at this point, we could uh, we could do a lot of different things with this. But let's say, let's see how much we can do without a calculator. That could be interesting. If I'm going to do this without a calculator, I am going to go ahead and flip this upside down in square. And this would become 9 25ths. And this is not too terribly bad it's borderline i want to reach for that calculator but i think we could handle this because what 500 divided by 25 would be i believe 20 20 times 9 is going to be 180 and then by the time this is finished you got 720 fish so not too bad there as far as part b is concerned without using a calculator Let's take a look at part C. It says, find the limit of f of t as t approaches infinity and explain what the answer means. Well, okay, I guess that means we're going to go to our f of t equation and we're going to write a limit statement in front. And if you recall, f of t was 900 minus 500 times. Now, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and flip that 5 thirds and make that power positive because I can work with that, I think, a little bit better in the context of this limit. We'll see if you agree. Basically, what's going to happen here? If you let this T get to be super big, think about what it's acting upon. You're taking a number that's less than 1 and you're just going to keep raising that up to a higher and higher power. You're going to multiply that by itself over and over and over. And what that's going to do is it's going to make this tend towards zero. That's going to approach a zero. If that bothers you, you could go back up right below me, right where that negative T is, right about, let's see, where is it? It's right about right there. And if I look at that guy here with the cursor and I drop the t to the 3 t over 3 power to the bottom right if i now i want to think about how i'm going to say that if i drop down this entire expression 5 thirds into the bottom with a positive t over 3 power then this bottom is going to get really big like infinity big and 1 over infinity is also going to be zero so you can look at it a variety of ways but no matter what approach you take I didn't have to touch a calculator. And so all that's left here is this 900 minus 0. And of course, that is going to be 900. Now, we talked about what that means, right? As time grows on forever, we're never going to exceed 900 fish. So that would simply be the maximum number of fish. that would inhabit the lake, we'll say. Now, for those of you that might end up taking more calculus, whether it's Calc BC or if you might uh, look at a Calc 2, 
course in college, you're going to study another type of differential equation called a logistic differential equation. And those particular kinds of problems use this idea in a little bit more detail. And this idea of this 900 has a name called the carrying capacity. Maybe if you take AP Biology, you've heard of that word. But that topic is covered in 7.9 in the College Board Calculus course and exam description, and thus would not be taught in a traditional AB course. But you're always uh, able to kind of read on that and check on that if you have an interest, but it's not going to be tested on the exam. Anyway, I hope this helps. This wraps up our AB portion of Unit 7. The only thing you got to do now is to keep practicing these problems, get better and better all the time. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe and always join us for more calculus content in the future. We'll see you around.